United States Highway 220 and Interstate 99. Blah! Okay, so if we look at US 220 in this video, we are supposed to look at I-99 as well. Probably one of the worst two-digit interstates in the country. But US 220 is a child route of US 20, but it's actually an orphan route because it does not touch US 20 at all. Let's take a look at the route map for US 220. As you can see, it starts at the Maryland border in literally the middle of nowhere if we're talking about Pennsylvania, though it does come close to Cumberland. And we'll go through Altoona, State College, and Williamsport, ending in South Waverly, which is right at the New York border. And as soon as US 220 crosses into New York, it ends. Now, normally, I wouldn't cover the two-digit interstates as Todd did already. This one with I-99 is an exception. This is the Xavier 456, and you are watching Shaming Pendot, with new videos out on this series every week. If you like this series, and my content in particular, give us a like, and if you really like it, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Alright, here's my weekly reminder that you can request your exit or intersection in the comments below. For the whole of February, we'll be looking at all of the 22s. These will be 222, 322, 422, and 522. Alright, so first we are going to be talking about northbound. US 220 in Pennsylvania. Before we even get into Pennsylvania though, let's take a look at this sign off of I-68 in Maryland, and we can see 220 North is signed all the way to Bedford. And that's the right choice because there's literally nothing in between Cumberland and Bedford, so yeah, Bedford is the way to go here. Alright, we enter Pennsylvania, and we get the welcome sign again. And from here, there's absolutely no mileage signs, because from this point, Pendant knows that you are going to Bedford. There's nothing on the way. So we have now skipped to Bedford, where we get an exit for Bedford, and then we get US 30 for Everett and Greensburg. We don't know about Everett. But we're approaching the Pennsylvania Turnpike and the beginning of I-99, and we're signed for Altoona. That's the right choice. Here we have our exit for the Pennsylvania Turnpike, I-70 and I-76, signed correctly for Pittsburgh and Harrisburg. And we get another sign, North I-99 and US-220 for Altoona. Here's our first reassurance shield of I-99, but if you look past that bridge, you can see the mile marker, and it actually says mile 0.0, .0 which is actually where I-99 starts. So this sign's placed just a little far up. Here's our first mileage sign on I-99, and we have Blue Knob State Park on this mileage sign, strangely, but we do have Altoona on the bottom line. But this Street View image is from 2012, so PennDOT will be taking good care of this sign. They won't be changing anything. Let's see what they do. Ugh, oh, come on. So obviously half of the sign broke, and god forbid you spend some money to replace the sign entirely, you just slap on an Altoona 27 sign underneath. I guess this also proves that PennDOT can't fix their interchanges because they don't have enough money. Okay, that's obviously a joke, but it could be that way. Here is our exit to Blue Knob State Park, the only reason he put it as a secondary. But really, it was signed because there's not really anything else that I-99 actually touches between Bedford and Altoona. Here we meet with US-22, and we get signage for Ebensburg and Holidaysburg. Really, we're next to Holidaysburg, so you could go further, like you could go Huntingdon, but who knows. Here's one of four things that Cordemange 437 requested for this video. US-220 is a really important route to him, and he had to keep his requests constructed. Strained. Otherwise, this video would have been extremely long. This is the exit to Plank Road, which is in Altoona. Now, it is at this point that PennDOT absolutely hates its own state university, Penn State University, that they can't even sign the city it's located in, State College. It's that simple. Tyrone has almost five and a half thousand people, so why is it even signed on I-99 here? Here we get a sign that says Bud Schuster Highway. Bud Schuster was the reason I-99 is numbered the way it is. But I feel like I-99 really doesn't need to be here. 220 gets the job done just fine, I guess. 
I mean, the road is at interstate standard, but really not sure why we need an interstate here, connecting Altoona and State College and all that stuff. And up at the next mileage sign, God forbid you sign State College, no you put Tyrone on the bottom line and Bellwood on the top line instead of Tyrone on the top line. Bellwood is such a waste. State College! Here is the only reason we signed Tyrone in the first place, PA 453. This is the only exit we get in Tyrone. Quartermarch 437 wanted to see this exit as well. Ah yes, Port f***ing Matilda. Obviously Pennsylvania's only way of avoiding State College entirely. This here is the smallest control city ever signed on an interstate in Pennsylvania. In this direction, there is nothing important. We just merge into US 322, and there is only one exit for the tiny little town of 600 people. So here's what I can conclude about PennDOT. They have no idea what State College is, and they are completely disrespecting the Nittany Lions. Just for this control city of its own, PennDOT should cease to exist. Though, the mileage sign does reflect State College after Tyrone, and we get it on the bottom line at 23 which should have been the sign primary. And all they are in favor of is the US Highway. The only way you can get to it is by the one exit we have going northbound. We just get to 322 West, Phillipsburg and Port Matilda. But Phillipsburg is there for US 322 and that is significant. Here we get unsigned exit 69 and it is for business 322 eastbound Atherton Street. And we are now North 99, 220, East 322, Lewistown, and Belfont. Nothing is right here. East 322 should actually be signed for Harrisburg, and North 99, 220, you know, Williamsport, which is where 99 will eventually go, and maybe even New York City for I-80. Here's the third exit requested by Quartermatch 437, mostly because it's technically his hometown exit. Exit 73, where you can go to the Innovation Park and Penn State University, and 322 East splits off here for State College, which we're pretty much already past State College at this point, and Lewistown, when it should be Harrisburg. And it feels like at this point, PennDOT has run out of cities to sign, when we're not even at the end of the state. All we get is 2I80 Belfont. No, that should say Williamsport and New York City. In the distance, we can see Beaver Stadium, and the easier route to get there is via Exit 73. If you were to take Exit 69, you would have been more on a convoluted route. This is just a ridiculous mileage sign. I-80 being signed for 8 miles and Lock Haven being signed instead of Williamsport. This should absolutely be Lock Haven and Williamsport on this mileage sign. I-80 is not that necessary because of its horrible control cities of its own. Here is the intersection with PA-150 which goes to Belfont, as seen northbound. This was requested by Quartermont 437. Belfont is where he lives. And fun fact, this exit, exit 78, is the only exit on I-99 to be an A-B exit. Now you noticed I haven't skipped an I-80 sign. You know why? Because I-80 is signed for Williamsport. It should be signed for New York City as always. What should be signed for Williamsport is US-220. And since it's true that 80 and US 220 run here together, this should definitely be both Williamsport and New York City. But the strange thing is, we get this mileage sign on I-80, but these are actually for US 220. Lock Haven is 25 miles away, which for 220 is a fine secondary, and Williamsport is 52 miles away. And I am assuming that's still gonna be carried on I-80. Here is where US-220 splits off of I-80, finally. But we only get Lock Haven. Why don't you sign Williamsport here? Oh, because you have it on I-80 already. Swap it out! But here we get a good mileage sign with the same cities we saw earlier. Lock Haven at 7 finds secondary, and Williamsport is our primary at 34. But then for no reason we get this mileage sign, which has an up arrow, which is strange, and Lock Haven is the only city on this sign. Where's Williamsport? 
Harry meet with PA-477 signed for Salona, and as you can see, this sign doesn't have an exit number, as the exits in this freeway portion are not numbered. But the odd thing is, when we get to the exit itself, we get this sign with exit 107. It is numbered. This will most likely be the numbering when this becomes I-99. Here's another pretty good mileage sign. We get Abbas at 3 and Williamsport at 20, so Williamsport's still holding up on the bottom line. Now, if PennDOT wants to convert this portion of US-222 I-99, there is an obstacle they have to face. We're approaching a stoplight, and the road narrows to one lane. We are approaching PA-44, and it is a full-on at-grade intersection. So they would have to do something about this if they want to turn this into I-99. We get a lot of at-grade intersections here. Not to mention the two roads of US-220 split for a bit. So again, if they want to turn this into I-99, they'll have to do something about this. Here we are back at I-180 and US-15. We are signed for Montoursville and Lewisburg. So once again, I'll leave you to the I-180 and US-15 videos for that reference. Once we split off from I-180, now signed for Milton, the US-220 North now gets signed for Pensdale Halls! Okay, first off, Pensdale Halls isn't even a thing. And second, Pensdale is a thing, but we are right there. If you would like to sign something more sizable, go ahead and go with Hughesville. I haven't brought this out in a little while, but here you go. But as I've just mentioned, Hughesville is more significant to sign than Pensdale Halls, and it appears as a secondary here, but our primary is Laporte. Okay, seriously, I know there's nothing for a long time, but Laporte is really small. But though it is a county seat and has an intersection with two state highways. Though after Hughesville, we still get Laporte on the bottom line. I don't feel like it should be Laporte, to be honest. I feel like the sign should say Laporte and Tawanda, even though it's far away. Here we meet PA42, one of the two roads we intersect with in Laporte. And we just get Laporte and Eaglesmere. Those are two places that PA42 goes. Leaving Laporte, we finally get to Wanda as our primary at 27 miles away. I know it's still generally far, but I feel like it could have been signed from earlier on. Here we meet US-6, which is signed for Troy and Tawanda, even though we've literally just bypassed the town. US-6 does take you into Tawanda, so I guess it's okay. Here we get a rare case of three cities on one mileage signs on a US highway. We get Ulster, Athens, and Sayre. I feel like those are fitting enough. Here we get our last minor exit in Pennsylvania. It is Sayre and South Waverly. Those are the last two towns in the state. Here's the part where I-86 Eastern dips down into Pennsylvania for a tiny bit. But of course, instead of getting Pennsylvania signage, we get New York signage. NIDOT signs I-86 for Elmira and Binghamton. So I thought it was signed for Corning going westbound and not Elmira. That's strange. And we get a straight up arrow for Waverly. And then after the intersection, we are properly welcomed into New York, but just with this little sign for some reason. And straight ahead is the end of US-220. So let's turn around and talk about southbound US-220 in Pennsylvania. Here we are approaching the intersection and Pennsylvania at the same time, but again, we get New York signage. We can see a straight up arrow for South US-220. And as we can see, 86 gets the same cities as before, and we get Sayer. So yeah, the first significant town in Pennsylvania, and you're going to sign it only two miles away, New York Dot? It's probably the best possible thing that we can do right now. And welcome back to Pennsylvania. Here's our first mileage sign. We get Ulster at eight miles, and our bottom line is Tawanda. Fitting enough. We meet US-6 with the same stuff as signed before. Here we get another mileage sign after Tawanda, and this time, Williamsport is our bottom line because it is much more significant than Laporte. It is all the way 62 miles away. So they do know that there's nothing out here, but Williamsport's really the next significant town from here. Or city, I should say. Here we meet with I-180, signed for Milton and Williamsport. We'll be joining up with the route to Williamsport. So again, go check out my 180 video for that reference. Here's where I-180 ends and the split of US-220 and US-15. 
115 is signed North for Mansfield, and 220 is signed South for Lock Haven. That would work out just fine, but I wouldn't cry if it were State College. But once we get a mileage sign, Lock Haven is our bottom line. And I'm not sure I like that. To be honest, I would probably put Lock Haven on the top line and State College on the bottom line because it is not that much farther away. But they will not oblige. Their hatred for Penn State is still at it. Lock Haven is only nine miles away and they keep it on the bottom line. State College. Here is what I think is the dumbest mileage sign on all of US 220. We get Milesburg at 23 miles on the top line and Belfont on the bottom line at 25. PennDOT, where is State College? Why are you wasting your control city on Milesburg? This should absolutely be Belfont and State College. And this direction sign that I 80 is no better, maybe even worse. 80 East is signed for Williamsport when we've already come from Williamsport. And they signed Belfont, obviously, for Westbound and not Cleveland or Youngstown. And Milesburg is signed as well. Truly, Penn Dot controls cities at work. And of course, once we split off and reach I-99 and PA-26, we only get Belfont, not State College, and the sign is not even overhead. It's only to the side, which Pennsylvania loves to do, and I do not accept it at all. In fact, I'm so angry right now that I am just going to do this. <laughs> Voila! You now have an overhead sign with the correct control city of State College and a pull through for westbound I-80 with Cleveland on it. Are you happy? Because I'm sure motorists will be happy when they see a big city and not some random small Pennsylvania town! Here's our first southbound I-99 reassurance shield along with a 220 shield and a PA-26 shield. When we get this direction sign in Belfont, we finally get a State College sign for once, for 13 miles away only, and we also get Howard, which is for PA-26. Don't know why you're in favor of the State route. Here we meet up with US-322, we also get an exit for eastbound for State College in Lewistown. No, that should be just Harrisburg. And we get South-99, US-220, and West-322 for Phillipsburg and Altoona. For once, that is signage I agree with. Here we get our split with US-322 West, signed for Phillipsburg. That's fine. I originally thought Clearfield was the way to go, but Phillipsburg is sensible enough. And now we get a pull through for Port Matilda and Altoona. Just Altoona will do! You don't need to sign Port Matilda, a town with 600 people, for just a half a mile! And for once, we get Altoona on the bottom line, whereas Tyrone is our top line. I'm glad we're getting Tyrone on the top line, it's not as significant as Altoona. Here we meet US-22 in Altoona, well technically south of Altoona. We get Ebensburg and Holidaysburg, don't know why we're still getting Holidaysburg, and South 99 and 220 are pulled through for Bedford. Turnpike cities I hate, turnpike cities are not great, this should absolutely be Cumberland. And yet, once we reach the next mileage sign, Cumberland is our bottom line at 50 miles away. I'm glad that's the case. Oh well, what a shocker. Only 17 miles down the road, Bedford becomes our bottom line at only 8 miles away. Cessna is not even a thing, unless it's a plane, of course, but Cumberland should have stayed on the bottom line. And yet, Cumberland does become the primary, and we also get a 2 US 30. Cumberland is signed because Pennsylvania has nothing else to sign on US 220. We meet the turnpike here, Pittsburgh, Harrisburg, well done. Here we meet US-30, signed for Greensburg and Everett, as was before. And here, we get only one city on this mileage sign because there's literally nothing else in Pennsylvania down US-220. Cumberland is 21 miles away. And welcome to Maryland. And we get the Allegheny County sign and Mason-Dixon line. Woo! We're finally done with US-220, and that was a long one. Lots of people have covered I-99 in YouTube videos now, but next week, we'll be starting the 22 Fest. I'll see you then. I'm Xavier, and as always, you are amazing.